two, one, ignition, and liftoff. Go Falcon, go Starlink. SpaceX has successfully launched its newest round of Starlink satellites into Earth's lower orbit from a Falcon 9 rocket. 21 satellites were on board. 13 of them have direct-to-cell phone capabilities. The launch marks SpaceX's 12th mission of the year. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins us now from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So, Bill, walk us through how this mission worked and how the first stage of the rocket returned to Earth. You know, what's so interesting about this is not that it's a Starlink launch, because after all, they've launched thousands of Starlinks now. I think uh, as of today, I think there's more than 7,000 that are actually operating in low Earth orbit. I think what's so striking about it is how routine they've made this look. You know, in the space business, we always say no launch is routine. Uh, but, you know, you mentioned the first stage coming back for a landing. This was their 321st landing on a barge out in the middle of the ocean. It's their 402nd landing overall. So if it's not routine, it's pretty darn close. And, and that's what's really amazing about how all this is working. What's the purpose of these new satellites? You know, Starlink is providing Internet access really from anywhere in the world. Uh, if you have an antenna, there are several Starlinks in your sky at any given moment. You send, uh, you know, you, you, you search the web. That signal goes up to the satellite. It gets relayed around to a ground station. You get the answer back. It's just like web surfing at home, except you can do it in the middle of the desert, in the, in the polar regions, et cetera, as they build out the system and add more and more satellites. Uh, it's not quite as fast as high-speed Internet you might get from a cable provider uh, or someone else here in the, on the ground, but it's getting pretty close. It's impressive. All right, so another space news. Uh, Starliner astronaut Sunny Williams spoke to her Massachusetts high school from the ISS. She touched on her unexpected long-distance relationship with family. Let's listen. I have plans with my, you know, with my family. Uh, my mother's getting a little bit older. So uh, in that regard, I just try and stay in touch with those guys as much as possible. I think I talk to my mom practically every day, just check in with her and call her and see how she's doing. So it's just a little bit different uh, relationship than we had potentially planned on for the last couple months, but um, we're managing and I think it's fun. You know? It's always so positive anytime we hear from her. What's the latest on Sunny Williams and fellow astronaut Butch Wilmore's return to Earth? Well, you know, as, as we all know, they originally planned to be in space for about eight to ten days, something like that. Um, as of today, they've been up there for 237 days. Ooh. And right now, NASA's planning to bring them down around the end of March uh, on a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule. And if it holds to that schedule, if they really did come down at the very end of March, that would be 300 days in space wow. uh, for Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore. Uh, and that might sound like a lot, but remember the U.S. record right now is held by Frank Rubio. I'm looking at a chart across the room. 370 days for him in a single flight. So they've got a little ways to go to catch up to Frank. <laughs> All right, Bill Hartwood, thank you.